Welcome to African Insights. Let's explore the truth about Africa. African Insights, please kindly subscribe and like the channel. The year is 2023. The majority of Africans celebrate the new year. Who decided that January was the right time for one year to end and another to begin? Yet most people are fixated to January blues. A sudden and emerging belief amongst Africans is that January, according to the capitalist system we live in, is a bad month. Negativity is infectious and we all get sucked into the ah January vicious cycle. For the entire month of December, there's been lights, music, fun, presents, and parties. So it is not surprising that once the decorations come down, you come down too. January is considered as the Monday of the months. We are now programmed to follow some socially adopted convictions. However, in the kingdom of Eswatini, in the Siswati calendar, Tinyanga Temiaga, January is Bim Bim Vane. Forgive me, Swatis, if I pronounce this wrong, Bim Bim Cause. So, Bim Bim Vane means abundance in food and supplies. Amaswati do not subscribe to this worry of January. January to them is to eat and be satisfied this month is when the first crops come in trees bear fruit and the gardens blossom before we dive into the comparison of the gregorian calendar to african calendars i would like everyone to fully understand why out of all the calendars i chose the swatini to be mentioned first We have thought of East Africa, Omo Valley in Ethiopia to be specific, as having the first human remains. However, fossils recovered in the rising star cave in 2013 in South Africa have rocked one of the most enduring foundations of the human story. That Homo sapiens arose in a cradle of humankind in East Africa about 200 years ago Whilst the discovery of the South African fossils have been reported to be likely as 335,000 years old. Just right next door to South Africa, the oldest mine in the world is in Eswatini. Nguenya mine deposits were worked at least 42,000 years before present for the extraction of red hematite, specularite, which are sparkling ores, and iron ores. Specularite was traditionally worn by chiefs as body paint for ceremonial occasions. Nguenya, which means crocodile, describes the shape of Eswatini's second highest mountain, looming above the Nguenya border post. And on its southern flank is the oldest mine in the world. For centuries, specularite has been sought after as a cosmetic. The first beauty parlor is over 40,000 years old, long before the days of Cleopatra and Helen of Troy, in the heart of Africa. Cosmetics were being mined to beautify men and women. Hematite or red ochre became the main pigment for the rock paintings. The beautiful tales from Bleak and Lloyd's Bushmen folklore give us a clear picture of what the Bushmen did with specularite in ancient times. They rubbed it into their hair to make themselves look more attractive. Today, the Gregorian calendar 
also sometimes referred to as the Christian calendar, is the most widely used in the world. The Gregorian calendar was introduced in the year 1582 by the Pope Gregorian XIII to replace the Julian calendar. The monthly names of the Julian and Gregorian calendars lie within the origins of the Roman leader's calendar. Before Julius Caesar put his calendar in use, the old Roman calendar existed, and in it, many of the month names were already the same. January is named after Janus, the Roman god of time. February is named after the Roman god Februs. March is named after the Roman god of war, Mars. The month of April is derived from Aperiri, which denotes the start of spring. The month May is named after the figure, Maya. June named after Juno or you know July signifies the birth month of Julius Caesar August is named after the heir of Julius Caesar Augustus we then have September October November and December of which they are named in the order in which they appeared in that first Roman calendar the Egyptian calendar is the first calendar known to mankind and the first calendar known to use a year of 365 days. Napta Player is the world's first astronomical site to be well documented, not forgetting in Yelanga here in South Africa, the Stone Ages of Mapungu, but these are less documented and as a result the shift is towards African astronomy that has immensely been recorded in Egypt. Ancient societies all around the world erected massive stone circles like celestial clocks aligning them with the sun and stars to mark solstices. These early calendars foretold the coming of the seasons helping civilizations track when to plant and harvest crops. They were also connected with religion and served as special ceremonial sites. Ancient Egypt, or Kemet, meaning black land, is the world's oldest and most influential civilization on record. Egyptians charted the movement of the sun and constellations and the cycles of the moon. They divided the year into 12 parts and developed a year-long calendar system containing 365 days. Historians of the world have proof that Egypt was the first to tell time. The oldest known sundial, also known as the sun clock or shadow clock, was found in Egypt and it's believed to have been used 3,500 years ago. The most ancient clock known to men is the clock by which the earth and the sun operate daily. Western colonialism and education did not only impose foreign political administrations on African indigenous communities, but also the Western belief in the sun, moon and other celestial bodies. This has to a certain extent had negative implications on the development and promotion of African indigenous belief systems and knowledge about the moon, sun, and the stars. There is a culture plagiarizing habit of Greeks, Romans, Arabs, and modern racist scholars that Ah, <laughs> <laughs>